Ordinarily, a Supreme Court case involves a petition for certiorari and an opposition filed by the adverse party suggesting that the court not take the case. If the case is granted, briefs are then filed first by the petitioner and then by the respondent. Amicus briefs will be submitted by parties who want to make sure that their point of view is heard by the court and understood. They sometimes provide useful background information about an industry or a context that's broader than the one brought to bear by the parties themselves. And they can be helpful for that reason in allowing the judges to reach a more informed decision. From my experience as a clerk in the Supreme Court, I can say that some of the justices will read some of the amicus briefs in some of the cases, typically depending upon whether one of their law clerks suggests that it is worth doing. Cases are scheduled for oral argument in the first available time slot after the final briefs have been filed and a period has gone by for the justices to read the materials and prepare for argument. Oral argument in the Supreme Court is scheduled for one hour, 30 minutes allocated to the appellant who has been granted certiorari, and 30 minutes to the appellee. There will occasionally be a situation in which one of the lawyers or the other seeks to yield some of his or her time to another party or an amicus. Oral argument is a very important part of the process. Typically, a justice of the Supreme Court comes to the case with a tentative view of how it should be resolved and almost inevitably wants to clarify certain details in a dialogue with the lawyers for both sides. It may be an opportunity to sharpen, clarify their arguments. It may be an opportunity to extract a concession that simplifies or narrows the case. After the case has been argued, the court goes into conference and the justices vote on how best to dispose of the case. The senior justice in the majority, which could be the chief justice, could be someone else, assigns the opinion. And if there are dissenters, the senior judge in the dissenting group will assign the opinion. Any justice may write a separate opinion in addition to that of the court, either dissenting or concurring in the judgment, but giving a somewhat different explanation for its reasoning.